Kathy, thank you so much for joining us today. And to kick us off, do you mind just giving a brief intro of who you are and how you use interactive demos at Yeah, Bushby? of course. Hi, I am Trupti. I am Product Marketing Manager at Pushpi. At Pushpi, we have multiple powerful products that we offer, and we have been using interactive demos since last year. Um, we have these product demos on our website, uh, which are mainly the lead generation tool for us. But we have also started using the product demos for customer training as well. So um, for all of our products, we do have catered videos on the website. And since the launch of those videos last year, those have been really performing well. And in fact, literally two days ago, on Feb 21st, we launched a brand new product at uh, Pushpay called Pushpay Insight. And we have created um, sort of tools for that product as well. Those are, on, those are on the website. We are using those as, you know, additional resources for the prospects and customers as well. It's only been two days, so I don't have a lot of insights on that. But um, I'm excited and I'm going to be watching how customers and prospects, you know, adopt those uh, tools. That's awesome. Congrats on the recent product launch. Always love to hear interactive demos being mm -hmm. part of it. I'd love to talk a little more about that, like customer training use case, especially with this new product. Are you using this, let's say, for async resources that you're sending to customers in order to announce the mm -hmm. new product and to learn a little bit, or maybe as like post-training leave behinds or a little bit of both? So my entire team, all of us on the product marketing team, started using product tools as customer uh, training um, assets. Main focus is new feature launches for existing products and these so I, I'm just going a um, little deeper into you know how we're using the product demos for prospects versus customers for prospects the demos they're more focused on why they should be interested in our product or a certain feature but for customers, because they're already using the product, they are bought in and, you know, they understand the value. The customer focus towards the, the narrative is mainly around how to use a certain feature. Yes, we do drop in certain, you know, why this feature is important, um, how this will help customers and their end users. But customer focused, mainly how to use and prospect focused are mainly why they should so the use cases are slightly different for us. Um, and also uh, the customer, the, the tools that we create for customers are also used by our internal team. Customer success also use those product tools for their training. Whenever we are launching a new feature, in addition to other assets like demo videos and you know, uh, talking points and all those other assets we create, we do share these tools with our customer success. And, um, they have been using these tools uh, for a while now, and I keep on getting feedback from customer success that they find a lot of value in the tools. So, um, so yeah, mainly focused on how uh, and what rather than why for customers. I love that breakdown. That's such a clear way to think about when you're building a demo for promotion. You know, it's the why should you get excited versus a customer. They're, they're probably already excited. You don't have to convince them of that. A little more the how can you actually do this yourself. I'd love to take a step back, and especially for, you mentioned building a demo for a brand new feature, hear a little bit about your process of determining, you know, what are those why moments you're including in a brand new feature launch, kind of how you collect research as far as what should be shown in it, and actually go about building mm -hmm. the demo. When I'm building a brand new demo uh, for feature launches or even for uh, prospects, I work very closely with my product managers because they are, you know, subject matter experts. I also understand the product, but they know all the nitty gritty and all the technical aspects of the product. Um, now, depending upon the audience, um, whether the audience is a decision maker versus an influencer, in Pushpay's case, the influencers are mainly the users in most of the cases. So they understand the product more in depth. So depending upon who is my target audience for that tour, I would tweak the narrative. You know, so I might go, you know, um, a little deeper 
into explaining how a certain feature works and adding, you know, additional important information about that feature and even adding some additional resources as CTAs. I, I, I drop those CTAs in between. Now, for example, the help center article, or if I'm creating any other assets that are customer facing, I also incorporate those. Um, now, whereas if it is just a general introduction um, for the tool, then it is mainly around the messaging of that particular feature and not so much into the technical details. Okay, um, just one last question for me. Uh, curious, you know, for if you had someone brand new on your team who's never used Novatic before, maybe what are your one or two tips for a Novatic newbie? First of all, Novatic, the tool itself is very easy to use. So there is no, there is not a lot of learning around the tool. It's very uh, user friendly. I mean, you can spend like five, 10 minutes in the tool and you can really, you know, start using it. Um, so I, I did do some training for my uh, team members when they first started using Novatic, but all of us, we are all now experts and we all use Novatic um, for every single feature launch. Um, but if you're creating product tools for the first time, uh, there are a couple of things that I would keep in mind. Number one, as I already mentioned, think about your audience because the story you are going to build through the product tour is going to change depending upon who is going to view or use the tour. If it's for prospects versus customers versus internal teams, the story is different for them. Um, the next one is using CTAs. Um, and using CTAs in the right place is also, I think, important. Um, some of the tours... If they encompass the entire product, the tours can get really lengthy. And I try to keep my tours short, 8 to 12 click um, at the most. But on our website, because the tours are for the entire product, some of the tours are lengthy. And I really, really love the uh, checklist feature in Novatic, you know, because that helps me break down the tours into smaller modules, which are more relevant to a specific area of the product. And that specific module, now it could be restricted to 10 to 12 clicks, you know. And after every module, I have a CT. Uh, and depending upon what I want to do my audience next, what is going to be their next step, I use the CT. Um, so I think uh, coming up with the right narrative, right story uh, for your audience. And second one, determining CTAs, I think that is important. And Novatic tool itself is easy easy to use and I highly highly recommend using the analytics as well you recently launched some brand new analytic features which we have started using it's helpful for us to see how our uh, audience is interacting with the tours because we update those um, on a regular basis so if we are not getting engagement in certain parts of the tours then we know where we need to make a change yeah those are some Awesome tips. I love mentioning build for different audiences. Again, kind of going back to the how versus mm -hmm. why. Eight to 12 clicks, music to my ears. We always say, keep them concise, keep them mm -hmm. short. Love to hear using the checklist and then using that analytics feature to, if you are seeing any drop-off points mm -hmm. or maybe if you did launch a new tour, just continually tweak them so they're as high converting as possible. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. These were amazing tips. Um, kudos to you and the team for building out some awesome demos. 